What's popular? You no, know, it's um, surfs up. You no, know, uh, ahoy hoy. It's your no. It oh right. What's good? Scrawny with the skinny. Corn dog coming back at you with another piece of YouTube content. Of course, we're here for the Pick'em Challenge, the Blast TV Pick'em Challenge. It's not much of a challenge when you follow my decisions. All right, seven out of nine for the first stage of the event. Mao's real disappointment. Fours definitely could have surpassed Gamer Legion in order to grab that spot, and that would have left us with out of eight out of nine. I want you guys to take this in. Three zero and the zero three wasn't even a risk. Everything paid off. So we should be confident. You should be confident. And I know you've come here to just double pick, double check your own picks, all right? Because rule number one around here, you guys know best. But with that said, I'll give you guys my insight for the upcoming Pick'em Legends stage. First and foremost, I want to recognize the fact that this definitely is a more difficult stage of the major. There is no clear 3-0. There is no clear 0-3. Things get really muddied at this point in the major, uh, but we'll get into that. What I want to, of course, jump into is my expectations for the opening games. So here we go. Um, I want you all to remember that Navi have the highest seed for this stage of the major. And I want you also to remember that I believe in the advantage of teams who start their journey at majors within the challenger stage. There are certain teams within this list who have already been sat in Paris on X setup, playing Counter-Strike day after day, hour after hour, thinking, living, breathing CS. And that definitely bodes well for some of these rosters. Now, of course, some of the attendees of the Legends stage also just got by by the skin of their teeth, and we're not going to put a ton of stock into them. But there are some here who I will weigh heavily because of what we've already seen in Paris. So go ahead, take a pause on this screen if you want to really get into the uh, nitty gritty of each of my opening three round picks. I do think there are some matchups here that are difficult to predict. I have a very difficult read right now on Nine versus Liquid, and I'm also not too certain about Breach versus Apex. In fact, Into the Breach is a team that I didn't get to see much of, so I don't really know where to rate them. Uh, but ultimately, I'm thinking Navi are the most likely team to get to the 2-0 stage of the Major. Because I expect them to be at the 2-0 stage of the Major, they're my shoe-in right now for a 3-0 pick. Because you know we play 9 out of 9, alright? I'm not just going to go with the G2 pick in the first stage and then get flimsy and uh, play Ants or maybe Ninja. No, alright? It's 9 out of 9 all the damn way. We didn't do it in the first stage to fall off in the second. So without further ado, it's Navi to the 3-0 pick, all right? Simple as the GOAT, he's the best to ever touch CSGO. And there is a very real chance that they could genuinely pick up a major trophy. Um, right now, if you look in recent months, Navi have losses to Heroic, losses to Vitality. You know, I don't think they are going to be a team that drops an opening best of one. There was a time where Navi started slow at events, but I think they've been sat at home getting ready for this one. We've seen an uptick in NPL's performance. Perfecto is the stellar support that he's always been. Uh, Electronic and Simple are the stars of the show, and Bit has godlike potential. So the win conditions for Navi are very clear to me. They are my 3-0 team, not because I think that they'll go through flawless, but because I think they'll most certainly win their opening two matchups. They have the seeding in order to do that. They're the most likely team to be 2-0. Could they lose to G2, Heroic, or FaZe? Yes, absolutely. But at least they'll for certain be in one of those matchups. With the other teams, there is uncertainty because of the difficulty of their opening best of ones. So I talked to you about, of course, challenger stage advantage. And there are three teams that jump off the page to me in terms of challenger stage momentum. First and foremost is G2, one of the two 3-0 teams. Monacy looks like if G2 make a deep run through playoffs, he could end up being the MVP of this major. And what a story that would be. The kid prodigy finding his form, lifting a major trophy alongside Nico. We can get into the Cinderella story as this major goes on. But for now, I want you to realize the greatness that you witnessed in the first stage of the major and expect G2 to move forward with a similar form. After them, 
I'm taking FaZe. Of course, FaZe just banked in on the reign MVP major performance, right? He was the best player at Antwerp. He's the region reason they lifted that trophy. And of course, he's giving them runway at the moment, right? Rops is the most consistent piece of FaZe. We saw that yet again here. And with Rain by his side, it feels like Brokey and Twists will have enough opportunities in order to put forward a star-studded performance, the likes of which should move FaZe into playoffs. This is a team that can win the event. This is a team that has won events. And it's a team whose individual form seems to be coming back since they're showing in Rio and their faltering that happened at the RMR. Yes, they took the route of the last chance qualifier, but that's now behind us. We're looking forward to the legend stage of the major where FaZe are going to find their groove. But FaZe also lost. They lost to Ents. Ents, in fact, looking fantastic. If we go back to 2022, this is a team that Snappy led to multiple playoffs throughout the year, but then the departure of Sphinx really set them back. Uh, Sun Pius is the real deal. Diha seems to be comfortable back in this roster yet again. Madden just had a career high performance in the challenger stage of the major and that bodes so well that's like rain or jks playing as well as they did for each of their teams in order to get to this point already when the floor of ents is as high as it is because of the likes of madden when we know that nerts is indeed the real deal after the rmrs and online competition ents are a team to be feared a genuine dark horse for a semi-finals maybe grand finals who knows okay uh, Snappy wants a major win. Everybody's talking about how Nico or Zaiwu is supposed to pick up one, but what about Snappy? He's proven that he can take players and get the best out of them. And right now we're getting the best ends that we've seen in quite some time. So those are the three challenger stage teams that I'm taking. And then we're talking guys who are coming into the legend stage that I have high expectations for. So Navi's obviously one of them, and they're my 3-0 pick because they have the best seeding. They will be in a 2-0 game. They could win that matchup. They could go forward. Who else begins the legend stage with momentum? Heroic. Heroic are a team that never lose to lesser opponents. It's such a rare occurrence, even in best of ones. They're also a team amidst all the legend stage teams that has one of the greatest map pools. And in best of ones, map pool absolutely matters. I don't think Heroic will be uncomfortable in many of their matchups. Yes, they have a difficult head-to-head -head in their opening game, but it's one they could definitely win, and even if they don't, they'll bounce back very well. Not a problem in my eyes. Heroic are a playoffs team, if not another grand final uh, expectation, right? We're talking about Heroic, number one ranked in the world right now because they're consistently making deep runs through playoffs. Yes, they're not hoisting all trophies, but they're getting close all the time, and so this shouldn't be a challenge. Vitality is my next pick. The reason being, obviously, the most recent Rio win. Finally, Zaiwu has a star behind him. Sphinx's individual level was right there. Their ratings nearly neck and neck in order to win in Rio. Did they peak early? Maybe. Will they have peaked so early to miss out in the following playoffs? I don't think so, no. Uh, Vitality should be a shoe-in for a quarterfinals run here. Uh, the fact that Zaiwu and Sphinx are side-by-side -side is the win condition for this team, but we also saw Dupree bounce back out of nowhere. It looks like he wants to make, you know, one final hoorah. Uh, the player who's attended every single CSGO major wants to make a deep attempt at a victory. That would mean Magisk has as many trophies as the rest of the Astralis members. And so there's a lot of motivation here, I think, for Vitality. You know, this is a team that was purchased, created, and built, and structured towards hoisting this major trophy. They need to do it in Paris. They just did it in Rio. We have to give credit where it's due and we have to give them high expectations. So coming off of Rio, I'm looking at Vitality and Heroic who are obviously the grand finalists. And if I look at the top list here, there's another team that stands off to me and that's Furia. Art has recently reinvented a play style within Furia. This is a Furia who still have what made them famous, an aggression that not many teams can handle, and an aggression that I think some of these challengers teams are gonna have a hard time dealing with. All right, this is survivability. This is Art who is no longer offering up consistent 4v5s. This is somebody who realizes the value of his life and it is a slightly different Furia. Now, whether things get a little challenging for them towards the tail end, if there's 2-1 games, 2-2 games in their future, they might miss out. 
all right? These last two picks I'm not the most confident in, but I think we have to give credit where it's due. We have to recognize that Furia are a pretty consistent top eight team in all of the events that they end up playing, that Queserado is a world-class rifler, if not one of the best in the very moment. Uh, Safe's op finds its form. Art's calling is safer than ever. Yuri is Queserado's right-hand man. We can't write off Furia. And then I think recency. If we have three teams here that come from the challenger stage, three teams that I expect to come in hot from Legends, plus that extra Rio experience from the majority of those additional four, oh, this is where it really gets tough, but I'm going with nine. And the reason I'm taking nine is because their recent results lead me to believe that progress is, is enough. The progress we've seen from nine, both online and on LAN, the fact that there is potential in not just Hades, but each of the players around him, Goofy playing better than ever, okay, Menio calling excellent games. Nine have the fundamentals of Counter-Strike down packed to a point that they can contend with a lot of the other challenger teams in this pack, right? We weren't talking about Apex, Gamer Legion, Monty, Into the Breach. These teams are on the fringe, and Nine has already proven to us that they are steps above the rest. This means that I'm excluding Liquid. It, it means I'm excluding Ninjas. It means I'm excluding Fnatic. And these are teams that have also made playoff runs in the past. But as of this current moment, I think Ninjas are too sloppy. The Liquid roster has made a run that dispatched of Fluxo, Complexity, and Greyhound. That is not impressive. So Nine's recency gives them an edge. They have a best of one to also open up this, this stage of the Major. That's not one of the best of ones that I'm super confident in giving nine the advantage to, but I just think if all of this work and all of this progress and all of this improvement that nine has showcased us is worth anything, they deserve to have expectations set for playoffs at this major. Polish Counter-Strike could genuinely be put back on the map even more so if they pull off this run and make it to a top eight in Paris. So zero three, that's all that's left to decide. And like I said at the start of the video, guys, the 3-0, the 0-3, these ones are really muddy. Uh, there's some messy CS ahead of us at the bottom side of this stage of the major. And so I'm just going to run through them quick, okay? Fnatic, I think they had a really easy run at the RMR. I don't have a lot of faith in these guys. Last time they made top 8, they just flunked out instantly. Into the Breach is a team that I didn't actually get to see too much of at the European RMR. They piqued my interest a bit at Brazy Party, but I still don't quite know what to think of them, and they have no real experience on stages or in these high-pressure situations. Bad News Eagles has made three majors in a row, uh, but usually they start challengers and then get to legends and then fall off. This time they're starting at legends, and therefore I think this may be one of the teams that actually uh, suffers from not having run up and warmed up and improved with momentum. You know, that's when I look at Apex and Gamer Legion and Monty and Ninjas and Liquid and all five of those teams, when compared to Bad News Eagles, have at least been here in Paris on these setups, on these PCs, getting ready for this competition. Apex, Gamer Legion, awesome for them to achieve a top 16 here in Paris. It's, it's, it's amazing to have some of these individual storylines coming together, and maybe they get to make it into a 2-2 game to give it a real last hoorah. But ultimately, when I look at this entire pack of teams towards the end, I think that on an individual level, they have most other opponents covered. Liquid have the experience. Ninjas have the recent form. As sad as it is, as much as it sucks, Bad News Eagles 0-3. This is a team that usually gets to Legends and then loses. And because they're not coming from Challengers, I'm going to say they come in cold. This is my prediction for the Legends stage. This is my attempt at the 9 out of 9 challenge, 7 out of 9 on the first. And also I'd like to say that my HLTV Fantasy team finished top 10 in the world for the Challengers stage of this major. Out of 21,000 teams, my fantasy draft was ranked number 10. So I feel like I've got a really good read at the moment on individual uh, momentum and also, you know, team-based results. So if you're into fantasy, go ahead, check my other YouTube videos. I'm pumping out content for the major because Counter-Strike is life. And I appreciate you guys tuning in for what is the Legend Stage Pick'ems. But that's that, baby. We're done. Catch you guys for the next one.